that song was written? 60s. In the 60s. How long have we been imagining this? How long have we been imagining this? This idea of peace, of brotherhood, of, of finding this freedom and grace all over the planet. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. What would that look like? What would that look like for our planet? And more importantly, what would that look like for each and every one of us? See, the thing is, we're never going to attain peace on earth until we find peace right here within each one of us. It starts here. It's that be the change you're hoping to see in the world, as Gandhi would say. It's that to be able to live freely, to be able to live in freedom, you have to have that sense of freedom within yourself first. First, that personal sense of freedom. Then we take it out into the world, into the globe, into the new earth, as Eckhart Tolle would say. So we have to uh, ask our questions, our self-question as we focus this weekend on Memorial Day for all those people who not only, as Glenda's reading indicated, not only in our own country, but all over the planet, people who have given their lives for their beliefs, for their ideas, for defending their positions. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's problematic because people who die defending these things give up something very precious. And that very precious something is human birth. And so we really have to take a look at this. We have to take a look at this. We have to take a look at what we're willing to die for. And so what I know is I'm willing, and I hope you're willing, to die to some of those beliefs and ideas that you've held on to very firmly in your life experience that take away your personal freedom. Those ideas that are about fear, those ideas that are about worry, those ideas that are about the boundaries that you set around yourself, you know, we're all about building walls around our country and around, you know, our ideas and our beliefs and our families, our tribes, our churches. Isn't that what we do? We build boundaries. We have to be willing to die to some of those ideas, to some of those beliefs, to some of those ways of being present in the world so that we can open up. I love the image that I've chosen behind me today. This is a, a really quote. Why do you stay in a prison when the door is so wide open? The, the fact of the matter is, today, in our digital world, there's no place to hide. There's no place to go. We're all connected. We know that. We inter R. We inter B, so to speak, as Tignan would say. We're all one. There's no place to go. There's no place to hide. And if we keep ourselves in this box, it's a prison of our own making. We're not going to be free to experience this human walk in the world with a sense of, of grace, with a sense of uh, well-being. See, the idea is we have to be able to take a look at our own system, our own belief system, our own ideas, the things that, that get in our way that are unskillful for us so that we can take charge of those things. And if we can't take charge of our emotions and our, and our ideas and our feelings, now don't hear me say that feelings aren't to be felt. They are to be felt. That's very valid. If you're in fear, you're in fear. That's just a fact. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're angry, you're angry. If you're happy, you're happy. Feelings are valid. Now, the story that drives those feelings needs review sometimes. So when we're in fear, when we're in worry, and our freedom is being you know, taken from us, the freedom to be in the world the way we'd like to be, we got to examine the story that's driving those feelings. It's just that simple. Yes, bless the feeling, feel it, let it go, examine the story that's getting in the way, that unskillful story is causing you to give up your freedom to that idea, to that belief, to that, to that feeling, really. Instead of letting those things run you, be aware of what those things are so that you can bring them in, have the capacity to transmute them, to change them, to shift those negative ideas, those things that are getting in the way, that are taking away your peace, 
shift those things so that you then have the freedom to fly, the freedom to be present in the world. See, if we all did this on an individual basis, if we all let our guard down, opened the door, let ourselves fly free, allowed everybody to have their own belief system, allowed everybody to be their own, you know, whatever that thing is, their own religion, their own color, their own country, whatever that is, do you realize if we each did that, we would attain this peace on earth? It would happen because each one of us would be whole and complete within ourselves. But this is the thing. We're all hooked up. It's in the way. We've got, I don't know about you, but my life is like a pressure cooker. Right? We've got a pressure cooker life, as one of our authors uh, tells us. And we have, we sort of are, are bubbling in this volatile, disruptive, uncomfortable bundle of nerves. Especially if we turn on the TV. Anybody been watching the TV lately? Politics, this is an interesting time for our country. Politics, we've got these conditioned responses to what's going on out there. Who doesn't get triggered? I get triggered, and I'm trying to stay as neutral as I can. I have preferences for sure, but I also know I'm not in control of outcomes. And I better get in alignment with whatever that outcome is, or I'm not going to be very free. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I'm going to push against the outcome in the long run, I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm going to work on that in the next few months so that when the eventuality of whatever happens, I'm going to be free to have a sense of well-being within that. Do I have to like it? No. Do I have to like it? No. But can I work to be free within that? Absolutely. Because what happens is, and I think this is true for all of us, it caught my, my attention when I saw the president in um, Japan and Hiroshima talking to those folks about the first nuclear weapon that was used on our planet. And it was interesting to me that alongside the commentary was the idea that right there in the midst of that visit, guess what? Somebody was walking right along with our president with the codes, the nuclear codes, and the briefcase, just in case. Just in case. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't that kind of how we live our lives? We walk around with our defense system ready to go, got my defenses up, got myself ready to roll. The nuclear codes are ready to push in case I get in trouble, in case I can't work it out, in case I can't come to some sort of understanding, in case I can't bring love and compassion to that thing, I'll push the button. Isn't that what we do? Especially if we're rigid and inflexible and we don't have any wiggle room in our belief system or the way we want to show up and we think that, you know, it's got to be just like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, Deepak Chopra teaches us that we've all got these grooves in our mind. You know, our minds are, have this incredible neuroplasticity. And sometimes what happens is we get these grooves in our minds that take our freedom away from us. It's got to be this belief. This is what you're seeing all over the world right now. You're seeing people clashing because they have belief systems that are inflexible. They're not willing to look at other people's ideas. We've got it in our own political system, for heaven's sakes. We've got these grooves in our, in our thought process that hold us hostage to those ideas and those beliefs. Deepak Chopra tells us we have the capacity to form new grooves. We can form a new group that's all about acceptance, that's all about allowing, that's all about non-judgment, that's all about peace, that's all about kindness, that's all about love. But you know what? we got to practice that to have a new group take hold. And once we get that new group going, guess what happens to this old group that's so deep with these outdated belief systems and ways of being present in the world, guess what happens? Just like in a, you know, desert where the motorcycles have been going for years and years and years making those tracks. Well, you stop the motorcycles and pretty soon time has a way of filling in those grooves and re replenishing the earth. It, it you know, softens it. That's what happens when it rains. We get a new groove, new ideas that add us toward that freedom because we're so conditioned, aren't we? We're so conditioned to experience our lives in a certain way. That's what we are as human beings. And we need to break that down. 
We need to be more open, more flexible. We need to find the key to the cage so that we can let ourselves out and not be so bound into those narrow ways of being present in the world. And when we do that, you know what happens? When we're willing to get our perception bigger, to let ourselves out of the cage, to open the doors, to knock down the boundaries, to break down the barriers, to open the walls of our minds and our experiences, guess what happens? We come into our full power. We come into the, our, our authentic self. Because sometimes, and this is true for me, sometimes I realize that some of those thoughts that I may be holding are not in alignment with who I really am. Those judgments, those feelings of anger, those feelings of fear, all of those things, they're really not in alignment with what I know to be my divine self, my highest self. And so I have to, when I notice that, when I see that taking place, I have to have, I have the capacity to examine that and go, well, wait a minute, is that serving me? Is that serving the greater whole? Can I work on a new groove here? Can I be compassionate and loving in this experience that's getting in my way, taking away my peace, taking away my freedom? Get a new groove. In the movie, Stella got a new groove, remember? Get a new groove. Get a new groove. So here's your invitation. One of our authors said that there are several ways to move toward this idea of freedom. Freedom of mind, freedom of being present in the world. And this, there are seven ways that this author has presented. First one, in every moment, feel new. You know what that means? Let go of the past. Don't drag around your baggage. Experience this day, this moment, this, this thing, whatever it is, as unique and brand new. Like Father uh, David Stenner Rast would say, this one moment will never occur in exactly the same way again. Experience this day as new, and within that there is freedom. Feel at peace. Breathe into the experience. And my daughter's always, she's a little one, one of those agitated types. She's always wound up about something. I'm always saying, just breathe into this. Mom, if you say breathe into this one more time, no, she hates me to say, just breathe into this. But it's the truth. If you can just breathe into an experience, there's peace in that. Breathing into it calms your body, it calms your mind, and then it allows whatever the stress is around that situation to sort of settle itself. And once it settles itself, you'll notice a feeling of freedom. Breathe into it. Find that place of peace in your body. If your body's bound up, guess what? You're not going to find any peace. That's a fact. Feel the harmony of the experience. Feel the harmony of the experience. Notice when you're pushing against the river. Notice when you're gravitating toward the conflict. Choose the harmony. Choose the balance. Choose that, that razor's edge that allows you to stay present with that thing without being knocked off center. Choose harmony. Be free of the conflict of whatever that thing is. It'll be there, but you don't have to jump in and be part of it. Feel creative. This is a good one. Feel creative. Who would think that freedom would be wrapped up in this idea of feeling creative? But what this author says is, be open to let this day, this moment, this experience, this relationship show you something you've never seen before. Something new, a new idea, a new belief, a new way of experiences, experiencing this thing. Within that, there is this freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. Feel loving. Feel loving. And this, of course, is one of the most key pieces. Because when we can actually feel loving, intentionally, uh-oh, I'm going into anger, I'm going into fear, I'm going into, you know, not loving, whatever that thing is, judgment, whatever that thing is, when we feel loving with an intention behind it, you know what happens? All of a sudden, it makes the experience different. It lets the guard down. And all of a sudden, whatever that thing is that we're trying to exclude or push away, or that person, 
uh, the left out stuff of life that we don't want to encounter and be dealing with, all of a sudden there's a sense of inclusiveness. There's a sense of engagement with whatever that thing is. There's an allowing. When we feel loving, we feel allowing. And within that allowing is this freedom to be present with this experience. Feel whole. I like this one. Feel whole. And what this is about? Don't push the river. Don't push the river. Go with the flow. Let it just be as it is. Life on life's terms. Be balanced and don't be drawn to the polarities of the experience. Allow yourself to be fully present in the experience in its entirety without being knocked off center. And then the last one is, if you have freedom and the ability to live these things, to live this peace, to live this idea of seeing every moment new, of creating harmony rather than conflict, of seeing that potential, of being loving, of soothing differences. When you have that, it increases your ability to love and it also increases your capacity for compassion. Love and compassion along with this deep sense of willingness to open up and drop the boundaries is what allows us to become free in our human walk in the world. So I invite you to bring your soldiers in off the field, whatever that looks like for you, whatever your battleground looks like for you, wherever you've got some, you know, where willingness to 